Well, good morning, church. How are you doing on this beautiful Pentecost Sunday? Some of you wore some red, some of you wore some white, some of you are ready to celebrate regardless of color, and that's awesome too. If you're able to stand, I will remain standing and we'll join together in our call to worship. Welcome at home as well. Uh, participate with us if you would for our call to worship. It's in the worship guide. Let's join together. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending the Holy Spirit upon your people and for this Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your disciples in Jerusalem. Unless the Lord builds the house, builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Lord, build your church, we pray, and may we each be moldable clay through which you anoint with the Spirit to grow your church. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth goes out from the Father. He will testify about me, says the Lord Jesus. Now all together, come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come, come Advocate, advocate. Sent, sent by, by the, the Lord, Lord of heaven, heaven. fill us that, that we may glorify Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Come, Spirit, Spirit of truth, and transform our minds, bodies, bodies and spirits, spirits as we offer up to ourselves as living, living sacrifices, sacrifices, holy and pleasing to you, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame, 
Now this gospel truth of all shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, it is freedom, I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Oh, praise forever to the King of Kings. Come Holy Spirit, come with energy divine, and on this poor benighted soul with beams of mercy shine. Please melt this throne. Stubborn will subdue each evil passion overcome and for me all anew. Mine will the prophet be. But thine shall be the praise, and unto thee will I devote the remnant of my days. Sing, come, O Spirit. Come, O Spirit.
Oh, bend down low and fill my soul and leave me not unchanged. Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning for Pentecost Sunday, and we thank you that you are with us and that we are promised that your presence will not leave us unchanged. I pray that you would soften our hearts, open our eyes and our ears so that your presence here among us, your presence here with us, would build us up as your body, as your church, and would make us changed people when we leave from this place. Amen. Amen. Before I dismiss the children for Sunday school, we found a set of keys on a carabiner. If you're missing a set of keys on a carabiner, it might be a second set, it might be your only set. Uh, please f uh, see me and we'll give them to you. Children are dismissed for Sunday school and our teachers. Well, looking out over this crowd here, I'm seeing some people I haven't seen for some time. And uh, welcome back. And I'm seeing uh, some others I've seen week by week. Welcome back. It's good to have you all here on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. We're going to uh, uh, pray together. Uh, we'll do a pastoral prayer. I'll pray for uh, some things in our church, some things around the world. And then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer using debts and debtors. So uh, at home as well, please join us as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the beauty of your chosen people, the church. And thank you for this, this day when the church was born at Pentecost, where 3,000 people repented of their sins, were baptized, and put their faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the diminishing numbers of COVID positive infections, now below 1% here in Massachusetts and other places as well. Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful for your preserving hand and for uh, the ongoing lifting of restrictions for growing number of people that are being vaccinated. Lord, we, we pray as people will return to in-person services and for our fellowship in Christ that our fellowship would deepen and broaden as we take in new members and baptize new believers. And Lord, each one of us using our spiritual gifts together to build your church, the church of Jesus Christ here in Bolton and surrounding communities. Thank you for your spirit's presence, Lord, at both graveside funeral services on Tuesday for Dick Waters and for the memorial service for Chris Gill's dad, Don Stokes, here at Trinity Church yesterday. Pour out your spirit upon both these families, bringing comfort in the days ahead, that precious to you is the death of your saints, and that for all those who die in Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank you for our annual meeting this past Tuesday as a church body and for the newly elected committee members and for continuing service of all our elected and appointed leaders of the ministries of this church fellowship. Lord, may each man, woman, and child serve you with the power and the grace that you supply. And may each service given be done in love and for the glory of God. Lord, as we continue to pray for Israel, we thank you for the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the people who live there and to be able to work side by side and walk together peacefully. We look forward to your return, Jesus when your feet will come down upon the Mount of Olives surrounding the city of Jerusalem. May we be busy each doing the work of our hands that you have given us to do to build your church, the people that you indwell by the Spirit as your holy temple in the Lord. And we pray that you will grow Trinity Church in holiness and reaching people with the gospel, serving the poor and caring for others with the love of Jesus. We pray for these things in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Here is further, as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is great to be here. There's, wow, there's a lot of people. Um, it is just a joy, I think, to be driving back to church. It's normal again, right? So here we are. We're ready to read the scripture. Um, so here we go. We are reading an Old Testament, the Gospel, and the New Testament reading. Our Old Testament is in Second Chronicles 3, um, 1 through 13. It's Solomon builds the temple. Then Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David. It was on the threshing floor of Aran, the Jebusite, the place provided by David. He began building on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. The foundation Solomon laid for building the temple of God was 60 cubits long and 20 cubits wide, using the cubit of old standard. The portico at the front of the temple was 20 cubits long across the width of the building and 20 cubits high. He laid the insides with pure gold. He paneled the main hall with juniper and covered it with fine gold and decorated it with palm trees and chain designs. He adored the temple with precious stones, and the gold he used was gold of Purveyum. He overlaid the ceiling beams, door frames, walls, and doors of the temple with gold, and he carved cherubim on the walls. He built the most holy place. Its length corresponds to the width of the temple, 20 cubits long and 20 cubits wide. He overlaid the insides with 600 talents of fine gold. The gold nails weighed 50 shekels. He also overlaid the upper parts with gold. For the most place, he made a pair of sculptured cherubim and overlaid them with gold. The total wingspan of the cherubims was 20 cubits. One wing of the first cherub was five cubits long and touch the temple wall, while its other wing, also five cubits long, touched the wings of the other cherub. Similarly, one wing of the second cherub was five cubits long and touched the other temple wall, and its other wing, also five cubits long, touched the wing of the first cherub. The wings of these cherubims extended 20 cubits. They stood on their feet facing the main hall. Our gospel reading is in Matthew. Sorry, guys. I'm not used to doing this on, the, on my phone. We're doing Matthew 16, going to verse 13 and reading to verse 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for it was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but, my, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, the one, this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. And our New Testament reading is in 1 Corinthians. We're in chapter 3, and we're going to start with verse 10, where we left off last week. All right. 1 Corinthians 3. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one will lay on lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for it. But it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his holy and inspired word. Well, let's pray as we get ready to dive into our our text for today, message from 1 Corinthians. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all of Scripture, and we thank you for this passage from 1 Corinthians 3. We pray that you would open our minds and hearts to your truth that will transform us, and that we would grow as followers of Jesus Christ as a result. Uh, bless now the, and anoint this, this word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're in a exposition of the book of 1 Corinthians, and we are now in chapter 3. And uh, today we come to this passage of Scripture that was just read. Last week we saw in our exposition that we're all called to plant seeds. A great metaphor. I don't know if you went out and started your garden as a result of that, or you started to share uh, by planting the seeds of the gospel in someone's life and, and giving them God's word, but... Certainly, that's the work that we're called to do as the church, is to plant seeds intentionally, intentionally in the lives of others, with an eye for the harvest, the harvest that God will do in someone's life and, and holiness and righteousness in their life, an eye towards people being saved, uh, for us to be growing in grace that God has called us to, uh, and bearing fruit for God. Well, today, we continue in this this theme of growing the church but the metaphor is changed it's no longer agricultural it's building all right how many of you like to build things with your hands tip them up all right you like to build things with your hands all right for those of you that raise your hands you say you know i'm with you how many of you like to build up people in christ all right all right a few more hands up there some, some same hands. Great. We're called to build people up in Christ, to grow the church. And this is the metaphor that Paul uses here. And the title of our message that we're calling, it is Building the Church of Jesus Christ as a Community of God's Chosen People Indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Well, the Apostle Paul is continuing in this topic of growing the church, and he says this in verses 10 and 11, and those of you at home will put the PowerPoint right up on the screen for you. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, 
For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Well, the Apostle Paul, he planted the church in Corinth. Now he's writing to the believers in that community saying, the foundation has been laid. And now someone else is building on that foundation. Other pastors, other teachers, other Christian leaders, they're now continuing the work that he began. And, and the foundation that he laid by the grace of God that gave him was Jesus Christ. As the ancient hymn from the 7th century entitled, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation, says, Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, binding all the church in one. The rock of Jesus is the foundation of the church. He's the solid rock in which all other, in which this church stands. All other ground is sinking sand. Now, how is Jesus the foundation of the church? Let's explore that question together. R.C. Sproul, uh, any R.C. Sproul fans out there? Paul, I'm surprised your hand is up. Paul is the biggest R.C. Sproul guy I, I know. And if you want any ton of tapes about him, he probably has about 50 in his car. He's happy to hand them out. Well, R.C. Sproul, uh, who was the uh, founder of Ligonier Ministries and founder of the pastor of St. Andrew's Chapel in Sanford, Florida, and president of the Reformation Bible College, he's now uh, with the Lord in heaven, he says it this way. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 11 is not all the New Testament says about the church's foundation. Paul says also in Ephesians 2.20, Jesus is actually the cornerstone. Jesus is called the foundation because he's the linchpin, as it were, for the entire foundation. But there are other stones in this foundation. What then is the rest of the foundation? The foundation, Paul tells us, consists of the prophets and the apostles. Well, that comes from Ephesians 2, 18, and I'll read that scripture for you. For through Christ, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. We have the technology. If we can only get the guy in the white shirt and the tie to use it properly, we'll be all set. All right. Well, Ephesians 2.18, For through Christ we both have access in one spirit to the Father, so you are no longer strangers and aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints, members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in which the whole structure is being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. So the apostles spoke with a, transfer, with a transferred authority from Christ to deliver his teachings. The apostles taught with the very authority of Jesus himself. And so Jesus spoke with the authority of God. The apostles also spoke with the authority of God given to them by Jesus Christ. So that's why we say the church is built on the foundation of the prophets, you know, Isaiah, Zechariah, Haggai, and Jeremiah, and all the rest, and the apostles, with Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. As the church father Irenaeus uh, argued long ago, to reject apostolic authority is to reject the authority of Jesus. The, the final analysis to reject the authority of Jesus is to, is to reject the authority of God. He is God in the flesh. Well, Paul's authority over the church in Corinth and all the other houses of worship was given to him by Christ. He and Peter and John and the other apostles who have written Holy Scripture, when they spoke, they spoke with the authority of God and of Christ. So the foundation of the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets of God and the rest. All the cornerstone of the rock in which the whole structure is joined together in which we become a holy temple is Christ. So Paul laid down the foundation of the church. 
by preaching Christ and Christ crucified and risen, ascended. He did not design the foundation. Let's be clear about that. He didn't design it. That was the design of God himself. He laid it down. He laid it down. He simply did it. 1 Peter 2, 6 puts it this way. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I'm laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. The Apostle Peter continues in verse 12, Apostle Paul rather, in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 3. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day, capital D, meaning the return of Christ, will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. The fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it's burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved even though only as one escaping through the flames. The kind of building materials that we use to build this church is critical. It's vital that we build the church of Christ here locally at Trinity Church with the right materials and in the right way. Paul's comparison of the Christian believers calling to build the church there using gold and silver and costly stones, not combustibles, inferior value like wood, hay, and straw, is, is likened to the costly materials that God uh, used to the nation of Israel to build his temple. When we think about the temple that we read about earlier, I mean, why does it tell all these details of all the gold and precious stones and, and all the kinds of wood and the cherubim and all of this stuff there? Why doesn't it just say, and they build a temple? Well, why all the details? Because they wanted us to have a picture of the beauty of the temple and the splendor of the temple using precious materials. Now, 2 Chronicles 3 gives us a rundown uh, of those materials that Solomon used. And it speaks about fine gold and precious stones overlaying the ceiling beams and door frames, the doors of the temple with carved cherubim, on the walls, and so forth. The believers, the true disciples of Christ, his chosen ones, we are called to build Christ's church using precious materials. And our work that we do will be judged, judged by God himself with fire at the second coming of Christ, where all our works will be judged by him. Now, the fact is that we're saved by grace only, through faith only, in the finished work of Christ. That doesn't mean that we're not to do good works. It means our salvation is not based upon our works. But we are to do good works, and we will be judged for our works. And so, let's dive into what are these precious materials that we are to use in our ministry of building the Church of Jesus Christ. And... Uh, Studying this and going through various theologians and, and writings and so forth, they've come up with various ideas, and uh, some of those come from that source. Some come from my own personal study, uh, but uh, you'll see how it all ties together at the end. Well, number one, using precious materials, it's preaching Christ crucified, risen, and coming again. It's building up the believers through orthodox teaching, speaking the very words of God, living a holy Christian life commensurate with those teachings. So the precious goal that we use to build this church has to be based upon the scriptures, the Bible that's taught to our kids in Sunday school, the Bible that we study in our small groups, the Bible that's preached on Sunday mornings. All of it is, is part of growing the church with uh, precious gold. God gives us the preciousness of his word to take into our hearts and souls and minds and put that word into practice in all of his commands. Building the church of Jesus demands that we take up his living word given to us in the Bible, live our lives in obedience to Christ, doing all that he commands in his word. Uh, recently, I got a book in my box uh, by 
one of our, our adult Sunday school teachers on 100 scriptures that you should memorize and put to, to work. And that's a class that we'll be teaching, they'll be offered in the fall. So look forward to that. But imagine now, why? Why study God's word? Why memorize it? Because it's, it's precious. It's like gold. And we need his word to, to grow his church. Uh, w. Harold Mayer, professor of New Testament at Covenant Theological Seminary, said it this way in Expositor's Bible Commentary, and we'll put his picture up for you at home. He said this, the costly stones and silver and gold represent preaching the cross for salvation, building up of believers, and living a Christian life that's commensurate with that preaching. Purity and depth of teaching and a life corresponding are crucial, for that kind of building material will stand the test of fire on the day of the Lord's judgment. That's well spoken, isn't it? It will stand the test of fire as the word of God is taught and is received and implemented in our lives. Well, secondly, the precious materials to build the church includes this. It's using whatever spiritual gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various form. We are to use our gifts. Paul says it was by the grace God gave him he laid down the foundation of the church in Corinth as a wise builder. Now, he's not boasting in himself. Look at me, I'm a wise builder. No, he's boasting in the Lord. He's saying, this gift I have of building, this gift I have of leadership, of planting the church and growing the church and, and administration and so forth, this gift of evangelism, that's God's doing. I'm just using my gift. And that's what we're to, to do, isn't it, church? We're to use our gifts together to grow the church. You see? To grow this church in all the ways that God wants to grow it, it's not the work of one person or two person or three people. It's not just Pastor Eric. It's not just me. Not just the elders. You know, not just the worship team. Not just the missions committee. Not just the Christian education department. And on, It's all of us. We're all called to do our part to grow the church using the gifts uh, they were given uh, as God has appointed it. Thirdly, the precious material that we use to build the church, it's building the church through loving each other deeply, humbly doing all from a heart of loving service to God. You know, when we do what we do because we love Christ and we love one another, that's like a precious gold, that when our works are, are tested by fire, that will remain. Say, that work that you did in setting up the sound system, showing up here and making sure things are working, working in the barn behind the scenes where you're not part of the rest of the church here, you're there, uh, whatever it is, if that's done in love for Christ and love for the church, guess what? When the fire comes, that work will remain. This work of, of loving each other deeply and a heart of service to God. Fourthly, the work, the gold, is serving God and others with the strength that God provides. Zechariah 4, 6 says, It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God stands ready to fill us with his Holy Spirit. We would build his church with the power that God supplies. You ever done a ministry in which you said, I'm just spent. I have nothing left to give. And then you, you, you go out of duty, <laughs> all right? You, you said you're going to do it, you, you know, and you do it, and then something good comes of it. And you say, wow, that was awesome. I had nothing left to give. And you say, what happened there? Well, God showed up. And God gave you the strength. He gave you the right attitude. And you served others compassionately with the strength that God supplies. He supplies. Even when we are weak, then we are strong through the filling of the Spirit. And number five, it's building the church of Christ, doing all for the glory of God. The one that we labor for is for the Lord God himself. It's for his glory. We seek not to erect monuments to ourselves. We, we don't seek to make a name for ourselves. Uh, it's not about our ego. Uh, 
It's for, it's for the glory of God alone. Some years ago, a, a colleague of mine in a, a former town um, served his church admirably for a number of years. And he was, a, he was a good man. He was a good pastor, a good leader. And the church thought they would honor him by naming the hall, their fellowship hall, after him. And they called it Keresy Hall. And he was, you know, was kind of embarrassed by that and, and kind of flattered also that they'd name this hall after him. Well, I was horrified, to be honest with you, because what we do here is not to have buildings named after us or halls named after us or some wonderful member of the church. I, I'm thankful that we don't have a hall named after someone in the church, or that type of thing. It's Trinity Church, and that's great to have it here. But you see, what we do is not for our own posterity or for our name written down. It's, it's for the glory of God alone. That's what will endure. That is building the church for the glory of God. Well, a passage of Scripture. Remember earlier I said I'm going to tie these all together for you? Well, here's the bow. All right, here's the bow to tie it all together. It is one that those that were in the love project will say, I remember that verse. It was on my shirt. Here it is. 1 Peter 4, 8 to 11. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you receive to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, the power forever and ever. That's a great verse that talks about the precious gold of our service. I'm so glad we chose that for the back of the shirts, and we're going to keep it there for a while because it really sums it up so well. Now, what constitutes the building materials which will be burned up at the judgment? I, I know the way some of you think. You said, all right, let's, let's look at the other side of the equation. Let's look at the, the wood, the hay, the stubble, the, the works that will be burned up. Well, it's just the opposite of what we've been looking at. The opposite of those five things that we've highlighted. First of all, it's teaching and preaching a man-centered religion, not a Christ-centered not showing forth holy living or obedience to the Lordship of Christ, selling out to a message of human wisdom and pride in self, you see. You know, uh, those kinds of things. Gordon Fee, in the International Commentary on the New Testament, put it this way, Paul is warning those with the strongest possible language who are currently building the church. The wood, hay, and straw speaks to those who are building the church on human wisdom and division warning them of the consequences of persisting in their present course. You see, that's the wood, the hay, and the stubble, when we just do it according to these manners. Secondly, it's not using the spiritual gifts that God by his grace has entrusted to us, and not serving others, but living for oneself and one's preferences and one's pleasures. Now, we have to be careful here. You say, you know, I don't want to do that, because I just, I don't like that. Well, it's not about what we like. It's not about my preferences. It's not about my, you know, what makes me feel comfortable. It's about what, what is using those gifts together for serving others and for going outside of ourselves to help other people and point people to Christ. Well, thirdly, it's not serving others and God with a heart filled with love and humility or with selfish ambition. Do you ever have someone uh, serve, serve you and you just felt so good about it and you didn't say thank you and they said, really? No thanks? I mean, what am I, I just gave you five, five hours here and not even a thank you? You have to say, well, what was their motivation here? Did they do it because they wanted the attaboys and the atta girls? Is that why they're doing this? It's kind of a window into, into the human heart. 
what we do, we don't do it for the applause of others. We do it uh, in service with a heart filled with love and humility, with selfish ambition. I remember this lesson was taught to me some years ago when I was at Gordon-Conwell, and I went to a, uh, a place called My Brother's Table in Lynn that fed the homeless and fed the, the hungry. And I was going there, and I was, I was expecting, you know, that these people would say, wow, a free meal. Hey, thanks a lot. You know, mashed potatoes and gravy, this is awesome. Baked chicken, wow, this is all a gift. And the director said to me and others that were serving, now don't be expecting these people to be so happy with what you're doing. I said, why not? If I had a great meal, I would be first to say, thanks a lot, that was great. No, no, no. That's not the motivation for what we're doing. We don't do it for them to say, you're so wonderful, thank you for taking your time. You do it for the glory of God alone. Probably none of these people are going to say thank you. You might have won, but don't look for it. And that's the way we are. We don't serve uh, to try to receive the adoration of others. But we do it with a heart filled with love and humility. And then it's not serving God and others in the power of the Spirit, but rather in the frailty of one's own flesh and one own, one's own human strength, that, that type of thing. And also straw and hay is laboring to build Christ's church for our own honor, our prestige, recognition, and, and ego instead of for the glory of God alone. Now, listen carefully. I know your mind's wondering because there's a lot to wonder about out here in, in creation. I know, I know you're wondering. You're, you're thinking about, you know, getting that pool ready. I know you're thinking about getting your, your lunch ready. And you wonder how long you can stay awake, you know, with, with this, with the heat and everything. Well, don't let your mind wonder. But listen now. Just because a church is large in size, has extensive gifted staff, takes in a large amount of money, does not necessarily, necessarily correlate into a church that its builders will be amply rewarded by the Lord. All churches, large churches, medium-sized churches, mega churches, small churches, each will be rewarded according to how they build and with what they build not simply by these outward signs of, of man's standards of success. Our works will be judged by the Lord with fire. Whether this church grows, and I pray it grows in number, that is certainly my desire. I'm sure it's the desire of many of you people too. But you see, it's not about building ourselves up, but seeing God's kingdom expanded and the church of Christ being built and grow. Our works will be judged by the Lord with fire. Well, Matthew 25, 14 to 30 speaks of those works that will be rewarded by the Lord. Uh, and even if you give a cup of cold water to someone in Jesus' name, if you visit someone in prison, all these things, God will reward us for these things as good works. So let's keep that all in mind. Well, and all who put their faith in Christ alone unto salvation will themselves escape the flames and will be saved at the judgment, and some with many works of praise to present to Christ. But continuing on with the final two verses of this text, and it's getting even more exciting as we move through this, the Bible says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. The building that we are building at the Church of Jesus Christ is not an ordinary structure. No offense, Tom, it's not just a barn. Tom's a barn builder, in case you didn't know that. It's not just a house, it's not a shed. It's not a business. No offense to any businessmen and women out there. It is a temple of God. That is what we are building. And who is the temple of God? That's you. That's the people of God. That's the temple. The temple of God. Now, Paul uses a Greek word here. Na 
naos. Say with me, naos. Say it again, naos. You can do it. Help me out. Naos. Good. Naos. Now you know a little bit of Greek. It means the holy of holies, naos. It means the temple of God. Now, different Greek words for temple were used in the Bible. Some, that was the temple courts, the, the court of the women and the Gentiles and so forth. But this particular word that Paul chose was the part of the temple where the holy of holies, where God himself dwelt between the cherubim. That's us. Wow. Are you feeling blessed? I hope so. That's us. The temple of God. The temple of God, where the Holy Spirit dwells. He's saying the collective you plural, the community of believers who make up the church together are God's temple. Now, sometimes we think individually, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That is, that is true in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, but that's not what's happening in this text. Here it's you plural, you collective, the church. You together are the temple where God's Spirit dwells and where two or three are gathered together there he will be in the midst of them, a sacred assembly. And with this sacred honor bestowed, bestowed upon the church comes this strong warning. If anyone destroys God's temple, God's church, God himself will destroy that person. You know, when someone speaks badly about the church of Christ, and says, oh, it's organized religion. I don't believe in that stuff. I would say, Step back, because the day of judgment is coming for anyone who speaks, uh, uh, works towards the destruction of God's church. It's a holy thing. It's the very holy of holies, the community of believers, you see. And there's this warning that, that Paul is giving here to this church and says, God will destroy someone who destroys God's temple. Now, this warning was given to the church at Corinth. They were leading the congregation down a path of destruction, away from the centrality of the cross. Uh, the Holy Spirit in their fellowship was grieved. And we'll see that as we go through, as we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, and we, 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 we speak about the carnality in this church in Corinth. They thought they're so filled with the Spirit, with all these spiritual gifts that are taking place, but it, it, that was not the case. God the spirit was grieved, grieved with cult worship, a personality, the pursuing of the wisdom of man instead of the wisdom of God. This stands as a warning not only to the church, but to all governments and people worldwide who seek to destroy the church, to imprison believers, persecute the believers. When every Wednesday we pray for the persecuted church around the world. And as we pray, I think from time to time, these nations that are persecuting believers in Korea and, and China and in and, and Iran and Iraq and down in the Sudan and around the world, there's this day of judgment coming for them that this, 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 the wrath of Christ would be upon them for all that they have done. It's a warning, a warning to all who seek to pervert the church with false doctrine, with man-centered amusements, instead of worshiping the living God and serving others as Christ's followers. In Christian community, we belong to one another. And through Jesus Christ, we together are the temple, the very dwelling place of God himself. Now, that's why it's so important we meet face to face. It's great we can meet by this way, by, 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 uh, by live streaming, and certainly we don't minimize that. We're thankful for, for you at home. And we're thankful for your being connected with this. But there's something powerful that takes place when we meet in real time, face to face, when the Spirit of God comes collectively through the body, through the church, you see. Well, today's Pentecost Sunday. The Church of Christ celebrates the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on 120 men and women gathered in prayer in Jerusalem, waiting upon the promised gift of the Spirit, when the Spirit of God came down upon them, Acts 2 says this, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested in each one of them. They're all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, this is very significant. Up until this time, the Spirit of God was given selectively to prophets, to priests, and to kings. Ordinary person didn't receive the Holy Spirit. But now, in this new dispensation, the Holy Spirit came upon men and women, whether you're prophets, priests, or kings, filled with the Spirit, and they all declared the praises of God in an unknown language as the Spirit gave them utterance. The work that God has given us to do to build His church is a work that He promises to do through us by the Holy Spirit. He's given us the spirit until the work is done. There's a guy that, uh, as a kid and teenager and young adult, I love to listen to. He, he died much too young at the age of 27 in an airplane crash, a man by the name of Keith Green. Uh, Keith Green died a number of years, and some of you uh, uh, may, may have remembered his ministry, or if not, you can Google him and listen to uh, some of the songs by Keith Green. And, and he, he wrote this song about the Spirit of God is given until the work is done. Let's think about that. Our work is not done yet, Trinity Church. Our work is not done. It's not until Christ comes back again that our work is done. He's given the Spirit the Holy Spirit to enable us to do what God's called us to do. And what is that work? Build the church. Build the church. See people saved. See people grow in their faith. That's what it's about. And each one of us needs to do our part. Each one of us. You know, there are two brothers. One was named Andrew, and one was the name of Simon Peter. And Andrew was first to come to meet Jesus. And what did he do? He went to get his brother, Simon Peter, and said, hey, come with me. Come with me. Come with me. There, there's someone I want you to meet. Oh, yeah, I met everybody. I don't know. No, no, come with me. And Andrew, his part was to bring his brother. He brought him to church, so to speak, it brought him to where Jesus was teaching in the open field and said, listen, listen, listen. And he did. Is that Myra Bigelow? I think it is. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. We're all blessed. Welcome. Praise the Lord. It's been over a year. I'm so glad to see Myra all the way from Upton coming all the way up to join us. Well, we need one another. And as the Spirit of God, as He fills us, we are to do the work He's called us to do together. Building the Church of Jesus Christ as a community of God's chosen people and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, He will build His church. The gates of hell will not prevail over His church, His people, His temple. Let's pray. Lord, in the stillness of this moment, you continue to surprise us. Surprise us with people we haven't seen for a long time. Surprise us in, in how that you lead and guide and direct us, and how you work things together for greater good in our lives. Lord, we are so blessed to be called your people your chosen ones of grace. And, and Lord, together, your spirit dwells within us as a community. The, the naos, the, the naos of the temple, the holy of holies. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to use the gifts you've given us. Maybe it's just inviting someone else to come to a meeting or come to an activity like Andrew did. Maybe it's doing other things. Lord, help us to sh show us our part. And together we'll build this church. And we thank you, Jesus, that we'll do it to the glory of God. We'll do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
We'll do it using the gifts you've given us. We'll do it using the word of God. We'll do it using love, loving you with all heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving others. We'll do it in humility. We'll do it in service. And it's to you be all glory, honor, and praise. God's people said together, amen, amen.
in the dark of night before the dawn my soul be not afraid for the promise morning oh how long oh God of Jacob Amazing Grace, Tim. That's something we can we can sing that as a, a just a an additional song. I just what am I doing wrong? Is it me? Too close to the speaker? How about if I get close to you? Is that all right, Greg? Oh, stay! Wow! Put a little little fence around me up here. Well, next week, with your permission. Maybe even without your permission, I'm going to wear shorts and a T-shirt just to be outside here with you. Is that all right? You know, uh, all right. Yeah, uh, we're gonna we'll lose the tie. I had to wear it today because it's Pentecost. But you know, next week is Trinity Sunday. I don't have a Trinity tie, so I'm just going to come with shorts and T-shirt on. But let's sing together, "Amazing Grace," as we conclude our service. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that been there. Well, we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. One more time, the first
Peter's first Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Done. Well done. Well, there's another... No, no let's, I'll do that to you. Well, two weeks from now, after our service, we'll have a picnic. Not next week, but two weeks from now. So think about that. The first Sunday of June. So we'll have our service here at 1030 like we're doing. But then at this point, we'll have a blessing for the food. And we'll break out just to bring a picnic to... Bring your own, bring your own picnic, uh, blankets and, and so forth. And maybe you want to share, or maybe you want to greet some other people. But plan on that in two weeks. All right, receive now the benediction. And now may the grace of God, the love of the Lord Jesus, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and all those whom you love. In Jesus' name, amen. Jim Galeski, how are you?